Oppenheimer review, full thing, spoilers, subscribe, here we go. Brunch! Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer is a biographical drama with some thriller leaning about the life of J. Robert Oppenheimer, his development to the atomic bomb and his public fall from grace over ties to the Communist Party. Powered by an outstanding cast led by Killian Murphy, this film features breasts, and as of this recording, holds a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oppenheimer has a runtime of exactly three hours. What's so funny, Chuckles? This is the movie of the year. Incredible. It is in not only the movie of the year, but one of the best movies ever made. Wow. This is probably the most hyped movie, I think, or I can remember since uh, Top Gun Maverick. And in both cases, I went in and then came out being like, oh, my God. Yeah, same. <laughs> uh, although Top Gun Maverick I saw probably like four times in theaters, I don't think that I'm going to see this again in theaters. And I don't know if I'm going to see it again for a while. All right, let's pull up that thread. Why? Yeah, because I just think it's – well, I mean like – it is a historical biography. It's a in thriller leanings it, with uh, with a an in depth character study. And those movies like typically aren't like the most rewatchable, especially when they're three hours long and they are emotionally taxing. And that this movie is all of those things. So like the rewatchability factor is pretty low. Let's get into why it is so good. We're gonna talk about the cast of this movie because I think that this Peter is really. Should go down as one of the greatest casts ever, but I begin and possibly even end my praise for this movie with Ludwig Göransson. Mm. The score of this movie keeps you locked in the absolute whole way. And I talk about the score off top because like, you are, this is a three hour movie and a biographical drama with thriller leanings that never had me looking forward to pissing <laughs> or reaching for the popcorn. Or doing didn't anything piss else. Once. You didn't, didn't piss eat. once. I have a little baby bladder. Let's get this boy a lower third. If I could ever go three hours without pissing, it's a miracle. So to do it in a movie theater during this, I was shocked that I didn't have to piss. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I did piss once, and guess what happened while I pissed? The bomb went off. So fortunately, it <laughs> was incredible. Fortunately, it wasn't the uh, the test of the bomb, yeah. which was like the big epic thing, but. I did come back to them being like, so we bombed Japan, no. huh? Oh, no. <laughs> Yikes. So I didn't know. I was like, did they did they pull an air Michael Jordan there and just like gloss over it? Or they really they really got into the meat there? No, it kind of it happened. They What's, just did it. That's So that's what I assumed. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 because I don't pee so long <laughs> that... Uh, and I'm also, side note, I'm unbelievable at minimizing how much of the movie I miss while peeing. I go down, I stand, I watch for a couple minutes. We have some chuckleheads in the peanut gallery right now. <laughs> uh, I stand in the little walkway thing, lurk for a minute, and then sprint when I need to and come back. All told, I'm missing 90 seconds when I pee most. So uh, let's get positives and negatives and we'll Glad get our that scores. Was part of the review. No, uh, anyway, uh, you're locked in this whole movie for something that really you you're like a biographical movie. A lot of it's black and white. Mm -hmm. You are so locked into everything, and I really do think it is because of Ludwig Göransson's score. It's very uh, Johnny Greenwood. There will be blood. Where you got like a lot of pedal tones with some, and you are just all. Oh, it, it, it makes it makes you feel every moment. I don't I don't know how much of it like I, I attribute to the score. You, you pay attention a lot more than I do when it comes to that stuff, but Famously I get up and pee during the bomb, so I don't pay that good of attention. <laughs> the uh the pacing of this movie was incredible. Like just so good. And I saw it with Ellen who's the chucklehead off screen here and she was like literally stunned that I brought her to a 3-hour movie. She was like about to fight me before we walked into the theater cuz she didn't know it was th 3 hours long. Said afterwards, even she agreed, didn't feel like a three-hour movie. Yeah, this whatsoever. is done in joint and tandem, and if you want to listen to the whole podcast, you may, uh, with Barbie. Barbie, which is an hour 54, and Oppenheimer, which is three hours, feel the exact same length. Yeah, pretty they, much. They both feel like two and a half hours. Uh, let's talk about the cast, though, because, as I said, this should go down as one of the great casts ever. Killian Murphy was amazing in the titular yes. role 
We'll talk about those later. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Matt Damon, Christ. one of the best performances of his career. Emily Blunt, awesome. Robert Downey Jr., incredible. David Crumholtz, are yes. you kidding me? Yes. I did not know he was in this movie, and I saw him early in the movie. Famously, he's in it. I and love I was the like, crumb boy. Ooh, a little Crumholtz. Yeah. I love me some Crumholtz. Same. And Oh man! I, I was getting progressively emotional over the course of this movie. I was like, this is a great movie that everyone's going to love. And David Crumholtz is a huge and excellent part of it. He really was. He was so good. Kenneth uh, Branagh. I, Kenneth Branagh. Uh, got, a shout out, got a shout out the guy, uh, Sean Avery. Sean, Sean Avery, Avery is in the movie. Is, is in is Christopher uns- Nolan movies for some reason. Unbelievable. Uh, and then... Hockey got- fans don't like that. Whenever he's in a movie, people are like... I gasped. Hey, Christopher Nolan, stop putting him in your movies. I gasped. <laughs> I'm like, Christopher Nolan does two things. He covers faces, and he puts Sean Avery in I movies. I got to uh, point out Josh Peck. Oh. Josh I'm... Peck is the, uh, no spoilers, but he's the, the, we made a movie about the making of the atomic bomb, and Josh Peck pushed the button. Uh, <laughs> Unbelievable. Not the Josh I thought you'd mention. Josh Hartnett, terrific. Jo- we're in the Josh Hartnett, Josh we're in the Josh Hartnett Heart-a-sons? Renaissance. We're in a we're in a Hartnessons. Joshessons. Because he uh, he did Black Mirror and was unbelievable in Black Mirror. Hmm. Uh, so Josh Hartnett making a comeback. Rami Malek. It puts such a smile on my face to see this guy about whom we don't know too much. Famously, he told Rachel Bilson to take a photo of him down. But whatever, we all feel the things that we feel for whatever reason. I would very. Uh, we'll talk about it in the full episode of this. I am so team Remy Malik there. Anyway, this is a guy who has gone from beloved to maybe overused to overrated. Mm. And there's so much said and thought about him. I just like to see a guy who I'm pretty sure is a pretty good actor Mm -hmm. do a great job in a nice little role. And he had a little role and was great. Uh, Casey Affleck had a little role and Mm. is one of like maybe three people in this movie that didn't move the needle for me. But whatever. Thought it was cool. You got another great actor in there. I will say, I like what they did with uh, Casey Affleck hearing his voice on screen before seeing him on Mm. screen because I had like... I didn't realize that I had this with Casey Affleck, but like as soon as you hear hear his voice, you're like, oh shit, that's Casey Affleck. He's just got one of those voices. He's got he's the Louis Prima of his generation. That's right. You hear it, you know it. And also, and I know that it can be argued that these roles were not particularly difficult. Would love to shout out Jason Clark and Tony Tony Goldwyn because yes, they were sitting at a desk asking questions, but they very much nailed the these motherfuckers uh, role of the movie. I mean, Tony Goldwyn sitting at the head of a table is like the role that he was born to play. Yes. Suit. I'm asking the questions yes, here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, then how come this is going off? Jason Clark around, what was he, 10 o'clock? On the clock? Yeah. nine. Not 9, 10 o'clock. Probably, right. Probably yeah. around 10, 10 o'clock. 10, 30. Jason Clark is well, just it, your classic 10 It depends because he moves. Actor. He, he, uh, he, pulls up the chair and mm. slides up. So he does slide from 10 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Uh, Benny Safdie, I know, is getting a lot of acclaim for this. I thought that he was also just kind of fine, not amazing, but I know that he's trying to get into more acting. So go off, King. The only character in this that was distracting, I think you're going to know where I'm going with this, is Albert Einstein. <laughs> uh, something about Albert Einstein, his look, his voice, his vibe, the whole nine. You have got to, I think, just do the air thing i thought that that's what they show were, i thought that this is what they were gonna do they like just showed him like from the window from, show a him distance. from behind let us see a little bit of the hair he had like 60 lines in this movie <laughs> <laughs> he had a lot of lines uh I, I, we'll talk about it in the regular review but like that's not the most distracting part about the Al- albert einstein's presence why? For me. Just because like I didn't think that Albert Einstein was alive when anybody else was alive. So that's an important thing that they were able to place names and faces. I know that there was a hustle and bustle in my theater when they were like, Germany's trying to develop one of these things, too. We got to make sure Heisenberg doesn't do it first. Mm. And people were like, ooh, that is where we got the name. Mm-hmm. He says it in, what, season one when he does it? Uh, positives and negatives of this film. I thought that, as you said, pacing incredible. One of the all-time great casts. Score outstanding. You could not take your eyes off this film. I mean, I, I'll i go a step further. It's one of the all-time great movies. Wow. I think that it's just like up there with the best of the best. It is just like pretty much a masterpiece. I do feel bad. We did not 
I don't think we spent much time on Florence Pugh. She was great in this movie. But people will talk about her. She was for, naked quite a bit. Uh, she was just naked the entire movie. But you know what? We're all naked a lot of our lives, famously. Uh, <laughs> negatives of this movie? I really only have should have pulled an air with Albert Einstein. I mean, I don't even really consider it. I didn't consider him that distracting. Like, I wouldn't consider it a negative. I don't have any real complaints about this movie. All right. Stamp it on letterbox. How many are you throwing down? Five. Big old five. Wow. So 10 it is from both of us because I, too, am giving it a 10. <laughs> five. Fuck. Uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe to the Brunch YouTube page and listen to the Brunch podcast. Love you.